Okay, so now let's kind of start to get into the meat of internal energy. And you're going to often hear me say molecular properties versus bulk properties. Okay, so I'll read this to you. The manifestation of bulk properties, and by bulk properties, that could be heat capacity, density, um, all of these things that you'll, you'll also hear me call physical observables. Okay. Physical observables. We could even call it chemical observables in the case of it being a bulk chemical property, such as oxidation state. All right. All of these bulk properties, these physical observables, all stem from molecular properties. And those molecular properties being the way a molecule can vibrate, the way it can rotate, um, its molecular structure, right? The connectivity of atoms. So all of these bulk properties, all of our physical properties, stem from the molecular properties, okay? So the first example of that is the internal energy of a simple monatomic gas, all right? Which here I have that equation written for you right here. Okay, delta M as a function, or excuse me, um, change in molar internal energy, UM as a function of T, is equal to UM zero. So there's this constant here where when T is equal to zero, we still have some amount of internal energy. That's called the ZPE, the zero point energy. So even at zero Kelvin, there is still an interaction between electrons and protons, and that gives us some base zero point energy, okay? Plus three half RT. Okay, where did this three half RT come from? Well, recall from our first week in fundamentals, if I think about this noble gas, so suppose um, something like helium, okay? Helium is free to translate in the X, Y, or Z dimension, I'm going to start referring to these now as the degrees of freedom. And so that doesn't just have to refer to the translations, okay? The rotations, the vibrations, even the electronic transitions. We're, I'm going to call these degrees of freedom. Sometimes I write that D-O-F, degrees of freedom. Okay, those are the things the molecule can do. And where does this 3 half RT come from? Well, recall, for each degree, we get 1 half RT or 1 half uh, K Boltzmann T, depending on if we're talking about a mole or a molecule. So thus, we can say the internal energy of a monatomic gas, okay, monatomic gas, or a noble gas, if you will, okay, is 3 half RT, and of course, plus some very tiny uh, contribution due to the ZPE, the zero point energy, okay? So let's see here. And so now finally, this discussion of thermal motion, so the disorder of the motion of molecules as a result of heat transfer, that is a bulk manifestation of molecular properties, this disorderly motion. And so the idea here is, if we think of this in exo versus endo, so like in an exothermic process, for example, a molecule is transferring heat to other molecules. Well, what does that mean? What it really means is it's transferring degrees of freedom, right? The energy is stored in its own degrees of freedom. And so thus, when it transfers heat, from system to surroundings, it is expunging some of those, that energy stored in its degrees of freedom. And of course, the molecules in the surroundings are going to then absorb that energy into its degrees of freedom, okay? And so as you might guess, the more degrees of freedom a molecule has, the more places energy can be stored, okay? So when we start talking about thermal motion, this disorderly motion, we want to think of this as, um, you know, the rotations, the vibrations, the translations, all of the things the molecule can do, 
and how and where that energy is going to be stored. Is it stored in the translation? Is it stored in the rotation? And of course, equal partition tells us there's one half RT just for each of these terms. So there's one half RT for a rotation, one half RT for a vibration, one half RT for a translation, etc. Okay? So moving on. So here's an activity. Here's another thing to come up with. Come up with expressions for the internal energy of a representative monotonic gas, linear molecule, and nonlinear molecule. And then how does the internal energy of a nonlinear molecule compare to that of a monoatomic gas? Well, I already did the monoatomic gas for you, right? That was in the previous slide. Um as a function of t equals um0, the zero-point energy, plus 3 half rt, okay? Monoatomic. Okay, so what about a linear molecule? Well, it's still going to have this um as a function of zero, but how many degrees of freedom is it going to have? Okay, I have a cheater note up, coming up. So here's a representative linear molecule, okay, something like carbon dioxide, right? So CO2 has two axes of rotation, okay? You can rotate um, around this way, which would be these molecules flipping end over end, right? Um, or it can rotate this way, which would be these molecules rotating to this axis end over end. So it can kind of go like this, or it can go like this. So that gives us two additional degrees of freedom to the already three degrees of freedom it has from translation. So it can move in the XYZ dimension, but it can also rotate in two free dimensions. And even if we looked at something like nitrogen, N2, which I know it doesn't, it won't have an IR spectrum because it's just, uh, it doesn't have a dipole, right? If we're talking about N and N. It doesn't have a vibrational spectrum. It doesn't have a rotational spectrum, but it doesn't matter. It still has an axis of rotation. It can rotate around that axis or it can rotate around that axis. Okay. If it rotates around that internuclear axis right here, if I draw a line through the internuclear axis, that doesn't count because it just looks like an atom spinning on end. Okay. So I'm going to X that out. Hopefully that's understandable. And so now that gives us five degrees of freedom for a linear molecule. Three are translations, two are rotations. Why not any for the vibrations? Because there's not enough energy at room temperature to stimulate a vibration. Okay. So now, of course, outside of that range of temperature, then we might see additional degrees of freedom. But for our normal, I'm going to say, um, I'll say representative room temperature. Representative room temp expressions. And by representative, I mean room temperature, like maybe plus or minus 50 or 100 degrees or something like that. We're going to dive into this in much more detail. You know, at what temperature does this start to fail, okay? But for our normal, like, representative room temperature, monotonic gas has 3 degrees of freedom, thus 3 half RT. Linear gas has five, ha uh, 5 degrees of freedom, thus 5 half RT. And then what about a nonlinear? Well, you probably saw from that picture. Let me zoom ahead here, okay? Look, a molecule like water will have three rotational degrees of freedom because now when it spins on that axis because it's nonlinear, it doesn't look like um, like a barrel, you know, like a single molecule rotating around. This nonlinear molecule makes all three of these rotational axes unique or different, okay? So you, see, you can see the expressions 3RT. Where does 3RT come from? Well, there's three three degrees of translational freedom plus one, two, three degrees of rotational freedom. That makes six half RT 
for nonlinear, which is the same as 3RT. Okay? So now the question was how does a um, how does the energy of a nonlinear molecule compare to that of a monatomic gas? It's twofold, right? Um, three halves versus three. So there's two times that energy. So what we could say is um, two times the energy must be supplied to a nonlinear molecule to get the same rise in temperature. And that's because if we're starting to transfer heat, right? Go back to that exothermic, endothermic, right? If I am transferring, um, I should say transferring energy from you know, system to surroundings, the nonlinear molecule has more degrees of freedom in which that thermal energy can be dumped into, okay? So we have to supply those degrees of freedom with heat to get a rise in temperature, all right? And we'll see the manifestation this has on heat capacity um, as we move through these slides, all right? Okay, so 5 half RT for a linear molecule, um, 3 RT for a nonlinear molecule, and of course, uh, 3 half, sorry, that's a little sloppy, 3 half RT for a simple atom. 